long. I've missed doing this. I love doing this so much. Like I love YouTube and Instagram and BookTube and just participating in this community. And so it's been hard not being able to do it. Long story short, I'm super psyched to be here doing this. Yay! So before I had even left the state of Missouri to come back to Texas, I was already on my library website selecting which books I wanted to take off of my holds list, but they would be there waiting for me when I returned to the great state of Texas. So I was a little over ambitious and I got six books from the library. I have already a library, library, and I've already read one of them. Um, when Dimple Met Rishi by Sandaya Minon. And I will do a 60 second book review for this book, but basically when Dimple Met Rishi is about a boy and a girl, um, both are of Indian heritage. Dimple is on her way to something called InsomniaCon. And InsomniaCon is like a coding extravaganza six weeks where you have the opportunity to, to do a lot as far as getting an app that you want to make out into the world. When she gets there, she meets Rishi. Um, Rishi is also at InsomniaCon, but he is there because he wants to be in an arranged marriage with Dimple. So behind Dimple's back, her parents have set this all up with Rishi's parents, and needless to say, Dimple's not super psyched about the deal. I do not blame her. But Rishi is also like a super sweet guy, and so Dimple is in a situation where she's not happy. She doesn't want to participate in an arranged marriage, but getting to know Rishi, she's also not... She's open to the idea of getting to know him and having, you know, some kind of relationship with him. One thing leads to another, and I did enjoy this book, and I'll talk more about that. Next up is The Upside of Unrequited by Becky Albertalli. Um, I haven't read her other book, which I think it, yeah, uh, Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. It is a YA book that I want to read, but I, I don't read that many YA books, so kind of on a YA kick at the moment. I don't know that much about this book. It came recommended, I think, by A Clockwork Reader. And if so, I'll put an eye card of her video where she talks about this book because she was super psyched about it. And so I wanted to pick it up and give it a try. But another YA romance is perfect for August and I'm, I'm excited to get this one started. Next up is Soul to the Sea by Ruta Septis. I think this is YA, oh, this is YA too, man. I did not realize so many of these are YA, but cool, cool for YA. I have heard such, such good things about this book. It has been on my TBR list for way too long. And I also love that this is historical fiction as well, so it's like YA and historical fiction, it's combining all of the good things, and I'm, I'm super psyched about it. This book is about four different teenagers um, who for various reasons during World War II are seeking refuge. Um, they're trying to get aboard this ship, Willem Gustloff, and this is actually, I, I mean, I don't know that much about this particular ship and what happens. I, I, from the flap, it sounds like it doesn't go well, and it says that it lifts the veil on a shockingly little-known casualty of World War II. So I'm all for learning more about World War II history, and this is definitely my favorite way to do that, by reading fiction novels. Sorry, World War II Nonfiction, just not usually my fave. Supposed to be great, super excited. Next up is a book that I am currently reading. It's the one I picked up after When Dimple Met Rishi. Um, and this is The Thicket by Joe R. Lansdale. I have no idea where I heard of this book. Like, sometimes books end up on my TBR list on the library and I don't know how they got there. I wish I took better notes. But somehow this book got into my reading list. And it's about a boy, I think it's early in the 1900s. It kind of reminds me, having read, what, like, 64 pages of it, it kind of does remind me, and it says this in here, but it does kind of remind me of True Grit, but with a male teenager as the protagonist. Jack Parker, who is the main character, he, his mother and father both die of smallpox, and then he and his sister and his grandfather leave and while they are leaving a bank robber kills his grandfather and kidnaps his sister so now jack is trying to get his sister back because it's the only, i mean obviously she's in a terrible situation and needs rescuing but it's also the only family that he has left and according to this and i i kind of got into this in the book already but he tries to get a team together to go help him get his sister and the best he can come up with is shorty 
a charismatic bounty hunting dwarf, and Eustace, the grave digging son of an ex slave. And Jimmy Sue, who I haven't met yet, but she is a street smart woman for hire who's come into some very intimate knowledge about the bandits. Of the 64 pages I've read of this so far, I'm loving it. I love uh, Joe Lansdale's writing style. It's very, very humorous, but it's like a it's a drier humor. Um, and I'm I'm really enjoying this one so far. I haven't seen that much of this on YouTube or on Bookstagram, so I'm excited and hope to have good things to say about this one when I'm done. Another book that I'm excited to read and have no idea exactly how it got on my list, but this is We Are All The Same by Jim Wooten. On, on the front it says a story of a boy's courage and a mother's love, so immediately I'm game. The book is written by Jim Wooten, but from what I understand it is actually about a little boy in Africa who is born with HIV and the hospice where he is born, the woman who works there um, adopts him or kind of takes him in. Their work together and their experiences that they have, for reasons I'm sure I'll find out from reading this book, when he died from AIDS around 12 or 13, his story was so impactful that his obituary was like on the front page of newspapers around the world. On the inside flap it says, this is the extraordinary story of Nkosi Johnson, the South African boy born with AIDS whose stout-hearted insistence that every child's life is important brought great change to his country and made Nkosi, in Nelson Mandela's words, an icon of the struggle for life for millions of people in Africa and around the world. Awesome. Can't wait to start this one too. And last but not least, because God, I love her, is Rainbow Rowell's Landline. I have read Eleanor Park and Fangirl by Rainbow, and every time I read one of her books, I'm like, I'm gonna read all of her books. I love her so much. That is not what happens, obviously, but the intentions are there, and I'm super excited to have picked up another one of hers. Landline is definitely more like of a sci-fi type book to me than her other books have been because I haven't read like Carry On which is kind of like a Harry Potter-ish take. This book is is different. It's a book about a woman who knows that her marriage is in trouble and one thing leads to another. Her husband I think leaves with her kids, really drives home that like her family is falling apart and through the magic of writing, <laughs> Rainbow Rowell, um, the main character is able to call her husband, but she's talking to him in the past, and so maybe the information that she gets from that, she's able to kind of go back and understand some of her mistakes or find a way to fix them and keep her family together. I'm super excited about all of these reads. I mean, this is a lot. Um, six books for me out from the library is more than I usually have out just because I try to be responsible with my hauls from the library because if I'm not reading it then someone else out there could want to be reading it and I have it and it's just sitting there and that makes me sad. So I really do hope that I get to all of these. If you've read any of these books and there is one in particular that you're like, no, you have to read this, move it to the top of the stack. Please comment below and let me know so that I make sure that I get that one read first. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more bookish content. Thanks for watching. Bye.